Just seconds after taking off, an Airbus A310 operated by Kenya Airways entered an aerodynamic stall. The plane climbed to 300 feet, but suddenly it began to descend. The plane crashed into the Atlantic Ocean, killing 169 people on board. Thirty January 2000. Felix Hufoid Boini International Airport, Abidjan, Ivory Coast. An aircraft with its flight number KQ431 was preparing for its regular passenger flight. The flight was destined for Nairobi, Kenya with a stopover in Lagos, Nigeria. The flight originated in Nairobi as flight KQ430 and was supposed to land in Abidjan after a stopover in Lagos. However, due to the poor weather condition, the plane was not able to land in Lagos. The flight continued directly to Abidjan, carrying passengers who were supposed to disembark in Lagos. On board the flight were 169 passengers and 10 crew members. In the command of the flight was Captain Paul Muthi, 44. He was an experienced pilot. He had logged 11,636 flying hours, including 1,664 hours on the Airbus A310. He qualified as an A310 pilot on 10 August 1986. Assisting the captain as the first officer was Lazaro Mutumbi Muli, 43. He had 7,295 hours of flying experience with 5,768 of them on the Airbus A310. He was the pilot flying on this flight. Both pilots had performed four landings and four takeoffs on the time at this airport. The tower controller informed the crew of the latest wind, cleared them to take off and asked the crew to call back when they reach flight level 40. The captain applied the takeoff power and the aircraft began its takeoff roll. The plane was climbing normally. The first officer requested the captain to retract the landing gear. Suddenly, a storm warning sounded in the cockpit. Due to the warning sound, the captain forgot to retract the landing gear. 
In standard, the co-pilot put the aircraft into a controlled descent. All the alarms made the crew more confused. By this time, the captain had realized that they were close to the ground. The aircraft crashed into the Atlantic Ocean two kilometers east of the airport. The aircraft was destroyed by the impact forces. Out of 179 people on board, 169 lost their lives. A state-of-the-art aircraft, the air was A310, took off at night, it climbed to 300 feet, stalled and crashed into the Atlantic Ocean. Were there any technical difficulties in the aircraft or was it the crew error? Let's try to find out with the help of the investigation report. It was pitch dark outside. As the aircraft lifted off, a stall warning activated. The co-pilot was the pilot flying. He pushed the control column forward immediately to gain the speed and stop the stick shaker. As what is written in the procedure in Airbus Flight Crew Operation Manual, in case of the presence of a stall warning with the activation of the stick shaker, the flight crew should immediately and simultaneously apply full maximum engine thrust and reduce the aircraft's pitch attitude and should remain in that position until the stick shaker stops. But instead of doing it, the co-pilot kept pushing the control column forward. By the time, the captain realized that the plane was going to crash and told the co-pilot to go up, it was too late. The investigators concluded that the accident resulted from the error of the pilot flying. He applied one part of the procedure by pushing forward on the control column to stop the stick shaker, following the initiation of a stall warning on rotation while the airplane was not in a true stall situation. They added that the false alarm might have been caused by a faulty flight warning computer leading to the activation of the stall oral warning. Also, the damaged angle of attack sensor and an erroneous calculation of the speed could have produced the false stall warning. Still, investigators could not determine the source due to a lack of data because the FDR had recorded values unrelated to the flight and therefore was not reliable. It is not fair to just blame the pilots because the recovery procedures for stall are mainly applied for an approach or in route phase. They were not trained to handle a stall condition during the takeoff or climb phase. In addition, it was night time. They didn't have a visual reference. Plus, all those alarms made the situation worse. This is all for now. Please share your opinion about the video in the comment section below. Give a thumbs up if the video was interesting and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos. I will see you in the next video. This is Sunil saying thank you for watching. Stay safe and healthy.